is going on my peoples, my people's people, and my plant people. Uh, what is going on with y'all? Okay, so I got a good video for you today. So, um, I have a big philodendron, uh, Gigantium, and bought it. Um, it's actually my icon photo. That's me smiling with it. I'll throw that one up as well. Um, I was very excited for it. I think it cost me maybe a little under 100 I think that they were selling it because it was so big and nobody really was buying it. So I bought it home and, uh, you know, I cared for it or whatnot. I bought one of those um, big gray Ikea pots, um, which really look nice. One of these gray pots right here. And I put it in, uh, I put my gargantuan in there. Um, and it looks really great, but it is, uh, it is kind of climbing everywhere. It's a little out of control every time I see it. I always tell myself, like, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chop it up, give it a little makeover or whatnot. So that's what I'm going to do today. Fill it in during Gigantium. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring her in here and I'm going to show y'all um, what we're going to be doing. All right. So this here is my Fill it in during Gigantium. Like I said, this thing is huge. Look at, look at that size. My head in it how big the leaf is, it's bigger than my head, right? So what I'm going to do is, um, there are actually three nodes that a plant is actually common out of right now. Um, and as you see, I have it like on a bamboo trellis and uh, I pretty much, I guess, how can I show you? I guess I have to turn you around. So if you see right here, um, it started to grow outward and there are leaves back there. If we follow it up, there is the main stem and that is growing up uh, really big too. And it winds and twines or whatnot. She's really beautiful. She got some copper, um, like a copper kind of disease on it or whatnot, um, which is this right here. Um, or it could be from like spider mites or whatnot, but I don't really see any spider webs or anything on there. So I guess it would just be that. But um, I'm gonna chop her up to pretty much try to get her uh, to look in better um, where I have her in my living room. And then the other propagations, I'll go ahead and pot up pretty much like this right here. This is a philodendron uh, gigantium. So I like how this looks um, all big and sprawled out and on that green moss pole. Um, I typically like to use that green moss pole when the plants aren't so close. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do to this one. Uh, once I chop it up, what I'll do is look at the soil because as you can see, this soil is pretty uh, almost dead and gone. And you can tell I kind of was lazy about it. This right here came out the pot and then I just surrounded it with soil. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna change that up and um, yeah, I'm gonna repot it or whatnot. Try to play with some of those roots, but I'm gonna cut it first and then I'll check out the roots. So let's get to it. So of course the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and clean off my shears. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And I've uh, already kind of decided on uh, where I'm gonna cut it at. So there's about, maybe about three or four areas that I'm gonna um, pretty much cut. So, and then I actually just found another node that was actually growing. So it actually has two different nodes that's growing at the same time as the main plant. And, um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut those back. Hopefully that promotes the main stem from uh, growing up a little bit more and maybe I can control it a lot better. So that's pretty much my objective. So I'm gonna turn y'all around again as I'm cutting it. And uh, that's just what we're gonna do. But make sure you sanitize your uh, shears. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come around back and I've decided that I see an actual, uh, so that is a node, which means a leaf will come out of there. So I feel like I'm gonna cut somewhere right here 
because there is a leaf right here that is actually connected to the main stem. So what I'll do is I'll cut right here in this area. To go three, two, one, boom, just like that. And so here we have a really nice chop here. Um, I treat plant wounds like I treat uh, people or human wounds. I don't typically touch it. What I will do, like I said, is grab my root hormone, which I actually have right here under my desk. So it's kind of like an antibacterial um, type of ordeal. And um, yeah, I just pretty much put it on the bottom of it. Some people probably call it like cloning powder too. Um, I will drop it down in the description, the one that I have. Um, Cause I actually threw the bottle away a long time ago. I just had this right here, it was a lot easier. Um, and I could put the plant in there as opposed to the bottle. I couldn't really put the plant in the bottle. So I got one of these right here from uh, the dollar store. It's like a little magnet on the bottom and got a little top on it, so. So just like that, I went on ahead and sealed that wound up. And like I said, I won't touch it because I treat it like a, um, I treat it like a human's wound. Um, I've also seen people use, um, I've also seen people use uh, candle wax. Um, get some like fresh candle wax and people will typically, um, typically people use candle wax and they'll seal off the ends. I've never done that, but if you do that, um, drop it down below. I would love to know like how that turns out. If it, um, do you like it better than using maybe cloning uh, powder or cinnamon? Sometimes people use, right? Uh, people could use cinnamon. Um, but I think that that's pretty much it for um, selling off wounds or whatnot. But yeah, typically don't touch it because I don't know if humans can pass anything to plants. Um, I guess I've never done that research, but I guess I don't want to find out in a way of losing my plant either because this is a really gorgeous plant. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, take off these sheets. So um, sheets are typically these little brown bits uh when they are nice and healthy they're actually green so what i've learned that they do is help the plant process and also um, protect the plant when it's growing so this right here is no use and there's no nutritional value for the plant anymore so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna take this off give it a nice clean look you can keep it on your plant you can take it off your plant if you want to me personally, me and my house, we gonna go ahead and we gonna take this off. I don't really like how I wanna see the green on it, unless it's a brown plant. But since this isn't a brown plant, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean this off real quick. I wanna know, do y'all take off y'all sheet too? It's actually pretty satisfying if, um, uh, being real with you So Yeah, go go ahead and take off all of those typically whenever you take off sheets you can see the The bud that would grow if the plant were to get chopped or fell at a certain uh, Space which plants are just so unique that they have pretty much kind of like a backup plan. That's kind of how I see uh, epical buds I believe that's the scientific name for epical bud. Um, and I just showed y'all pretty much what an epical bud is, but I'll show you again. So, right here, you see that little bump right there? So, if I were to chop right here, a plant would then grow from this epical bud. So, um, that is as well under the sheath with the new plant. So, it's like, this and so this will be on one side and the plan will be on the other side. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool and nice and scientific like. So what I'm actually do, I'm gonna put this off to the side and I'm gonna continue cutting over here. So I know it's the same plant, but I always just clean off my shears in between. I mean, it's a, it's a little, little sanitation wipe, so it's still wet. She kind of look bare now, don't she? 
So I'm gonna turn you around again because I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna cut on the back end. Yeah, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna cut on the back end. So now we're down here on the ground. I don't really got a desk that I really wanna like clean up or put this soil on or whatnot. So we're gonna just hit the floor. Um, so what I'm actually gonna do is take this out the pot. I'm gonna um, massage the roots or whatnot, see what maybe I can kind of move around or whatnot. And from there, I will pretty much just put it in new soil. I'll go ahead and it doesn't look like the old soil is bad. It just looked like when I put it into the pot and I didn't massage it then, that stayed pretty much kind of like a root ball. So what I'm gonna do is massage it so I can get that root ball to uh, kind of move or whatnot. Then go ahead and put in some fresh soil. Okay, so um, after getting through all of this, I now have this right here, um, which is what I should have did the first time. Um, I also went ahead and cut off like a lot of the bad dead roots. And you're probably thinking to yourself, like, how do you know that these are bad roots? Well, if you look at these, you can see that they are light brown in color, um, which tells me that they still are hydrated. These here are brown and uh, not as thick or whatnot. Um, so that tells me also that these are pretty much dead and they give the plant no life. Also, I actually found one of these right here, which is uh, kind of cloth-like. In the plant community, we call these death plugs. So pretty much the plant was grown in a type of plug, um, kind of like a, um, Kind of like a little pot almost um where the plant grew out of this or whatnot but these were never taken off and what that can actually do is kind of restrict your plant but as you see this kind of grew past it but i went ahead and took it off anyways so um here are the dead roots and um yeah now i have this so what i'm going to do right now is kind of cipher through all of this um all the roots and stuff like that clean it all up and then we will be back top side so that we can replant it. So I'm gonna do that in uh, three, two. Okay, so we are back um, after I cleaned everything up. And uh, what I decided was just go ahead and get rid of all that soil there. Um, I have a lot more soil, so I will be good. Um, 
yeah, so same pot, we're gonna put it in. Still good, still look good. I had to, when you buy this pot right here, it doesn't come with the holes. So what you have to do is uh, pretty much drill you some holes in there and there's like kits that you can use and whatnot. I'm sure you could probably find it on YouTube somewhere. It wasn't that difficult. So what I'm actually gonna do is, um, I decided that I'm gonna put the main plant in there. And then I'm also gonna put uh, another one of the other cuttings in there as well. So it, was, so it won't look as bare. Um, I'm not gonna take off any bottom leaves. If the bottom leaves actually die off, that's okay. Um, what it allows is the rest of the plants to still thrive while I understand that there might be a sacrifice on the bottom. Typically the bottom leaf might or might not die off. I don't know how it's gonna go, but um, sometimes that's how it happens. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and pot up both of them and stick both of them to the um, the uh, bamboo pole that I have for it, which I'm gonna keep that pole there because it's pretty sturdy. Um, I like kind of how it looks right now. Um, I know it's gonna stick up a lot higher than the other plant, but I don't want to have to repot it and then put another plant in there or whatnot. And I don't wanna put this on a moss pole because that'll, this plant is obviously way too big for like a moss pole. It will rip through a moss pole, uh, especially with these big old roots. Um, so I'm okay with the uh, area roots kind of sticking out and stuff like that. It doesn't bother me none. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. So uh, here is my, um, here is my, uh, Here is my bamboo stick right here. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, put just a bottom layer here. Hopefully I don't waste any of the soil. I just got a regular little Dixon cup, but that's how we do it around here. And it's probably good to put a mask on or something because uh, this stuff is really, really dusty. And if you're gonna be planting like this real big, Definitely get one of those uh, kind of water protectors or whatnot so the soil doesn't just go all the way through. I'm sure once I water it, it'll settle it a lot better. But for right now, this is this is what we got. So these are the roots in which we got, which I'm good with that because it's a lot more loose. That means it'll grow. Um, it should give it the ability to grow a little bit better. So um, all of these area roots, I'm gonna put in a pot as well as the actual plant roots. Um, it's gonna pretty much help the plant grow. So make sure you get all those area roots in the pocket. I mean, in the pot. So that there looks good to me. And then I'm gonna put this little buddy right here in there as well. Like I said, this is the smaller, I mean, this is the bottom leaf, so I may lose this, so I appreciate you. If I don't, even better. I got some, I used twine before, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this uh, tape here. This is velvet plant tape, typically garden tape. You can find it on Amazon, you can find it in your local plant store. Pretty inexpensive. I like it because I can reuse it over and over again. So I'm putting as many area roots down in the substrate as I can. Reason being, I want those roots to turn into uh, roots to help the plant grow. Okay, 
So this is kind of where we have it right now. Um, typically, whenever you water your plants, the leaves won't sprawl out like this right here. So that's what I'm hoping. Um, as well as when it starts to grow upward, the leaves will sit up like this right here. So um, what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and fill in the rest of the pot. And um, I might adjust some leaves to kind of look a little bit better, maybe perk them up or whatnot. Okay, so this is where I got it to. I got some of the leaves to kind of turn around this way. I figure once it gets some light, maybe it may turn over, maybe it may not. But um, this is what I got. I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with the other two. All right, so I took that uh, gargantuan and uh, went ahead and wiped off the leaves and uh you know because any dust or any bugs or anything like that and then i saturated the water uh saturated the soil so um that was pretty easy so um what i'm gonna do is plant up these next two i'm gonna try not to make a home i'll cut it as best as possible um, i always try to stay like under 30 minutes so um yeah let me go ahead and let me get to this one right here so We got this big girl right here, which she is looking really gorgeous. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in the pot just as well. Um, I'm hoping that, yes, it grows some aerial roots, but I'm hoping that it grows more, um, or soil roots. I know it's gonna grow soil roots, but I'm hoping that it grows more aerial roots. Uh, so it doesn't, the I would rather the area roots grow rather than the soil roots so that I can keep it in a smaller pot and it'll still be okay. So that's what I'm hoping. So I'm gonna put these area roots in the pot and I'm gonna put a, a pole back here. And I've gotten this pole from um, Pike. It is a plant store here in, um, in Georgia, in Atlanta. Um, this cost me about eight bucks, which is pretty long, probably about four feet, maybe. Maybe about four or five feet, whatnot. Pretty good, because it's got like little spikes at the bottom. I reuse this, and you can see that kind of turned the metal. This cost me about eight bucks, so I'm gonna use this right here. So what I like to do is typically tie this to the pole first, and then I will, um, and then I will plant it up. So let me go get some plant tape. Okay, so I want to go ahead and get, like I said, some garden ties. I believe I got this off of Amazon or whatnot. Um, typically, it comes in like, kind of like a big sprawl like this right here. One side is velvet, one side is cloth, I suppose. And it's just easier to reuse and use and stuff like that. So I typically get this as opposed to twine. I got twine before, but... I don't too much care for it. So I got this right here, all right? So I already cut up a few pieces, so it's gonna make it a lot easier for me to go ahead and attach the plant to the pole. So what I'll do is put the pole in here and then I'll adjust the plant like I want it to be.
So right here, I'm putting all of the area roots in the pot. What that's gonna do is uh, act as the, um, pretty much act as the roots. So um, that's gonna make it a lot easier uh, for the plant to get its nutrition, nutritional values of nutrients. I apologize, it, uh, it helped to get its nutrients and water and stuff, stuff like that. Hopefully this leaves still on the furrow, but of course I'll keep you guys updated on that. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and put uh, soil in the pot and I'll be done with this one right here. And she is looking beautiful. I'll probably clean her off off camera just as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pot this one up or put soil in the pot. So this is where I'm at. Um, I pretty much got three uh, new plants out of that one, which was what I think was gonna happen. Um, I have here pretty much this big girl right here. And I'm hoping to uh, that these leaves turn over. Um, that That's my hope um, by putting it under uh, better light or uh, more light or whatnot maybe it may flip over i've typically seen one of my plants um that had leaves that were upside down that died which that's that would be tragic but um not all bad i mean you know the rest of the plant will grow so um you can see i kind of tied it up a little bit or whatnot to kind of like adjust it so it can flip over but i will keep um at attention of it or whatnot so that's what i'll do but that is uh, pretty much it. And uh, yeah, this was a long one. If you stayed to the end, I greatly appreciate you. Um, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it. If you got any questions, um, definitely comment down below. I appreciate a lot of the people that are commenting um, on my videos and actually interacting with me and I'm it's pretty cool because I feel like I'm kind of uh, creating a community. So I greatly appreciate you. Um, again, my name is Jama, Jamaji Plants. And if this is your first time, definitely subscribe. Come hang out with your boy. We got a nice little, uh, little plant community going on here. And um, yeah, I guess I'll see you on the next time. No, I know. I'll see you on the next time. And as always, love, peace plants.